back to my channel. My name is Kayla. If you're new here on this channel, I talk about basically whatever I want. Hello. And if you're returning, hi, so nice to see you again. I love you. So this makeup look one. And I'm not going to say that I ate this, but I did chew. I did chew it up. Maybe spit it out a little. But I think it looked kind of good. Like, I... I can't keep coming on here and hyping myself up like this because people are going to think that I'm a fucking narcissist. But my makeup skills have gotten so much better. And be it's because I do these goddamn polls where I'm just like, hey, y'all, she's my makeup look. And then, like, when I'm on YouTube, I'm like, I don't want to look crusty, dusty, musty. You know, I don't want to look like that. Some some videos I do look crusty. My last video, I, I did look crust. You know, it's given crust. But I think I kind of ate this one. And just to let you guys know, these are fake. I mean, I actually do have my nose pierced, but I couldn't find my stud anymore because, um, little story time, I used to work at a grocery store chain and I had my septum pierced and my nose pierced and they told me that I had to take them out in order to work there. And so I did. And then I never put them back in. And that was in 2015. <laughs> so it's been a really long time. I don't know if my septum closed. I'm going to assume that it did, unfortunately. But I have other piercings too. I've had my septum pierced, had my nose pierced. I want my eyebrow pierced. And then I have like parts of my other parts of my body pierced that are more like sensitive. Anyway, but I want to get this. Whatever this is called, this is cute as shit. Regardless. And I, I do think I kind of ate this down. Let me turn on my light a little bit because it's like, okay. Okay. Today we're going to be talking about music. This is completely different than what I usually talk about on this channel. Usually I talk about body positivity, fat acceptance, and all that stuff. And don't worry, I'll be going back to it. But I really want to talk about music, okay? Because I have been listening to so much music recently. But today we're going to talk about Mitski because Mitski's my girl. I love Mitski. I have loved Mitski probably since 2016 because between 2016 and 2018, I met a new group of friends that were very much into the kind of music that I listen to now. Okay. Um, unfortunately, I'm not really friends with them anymore, but I still love listening to the music, sincerely. So, like, artists like Andrew Olsen, Chelsea Wolf, fucking Mitski, Way's Blood, Beach House, fucking, wow, some of them are skipping me. Those are really, the Fiona Apple, obviously, um, Ethel Kane, stuff like that. You know, the girls. You know, the gods, the, you know, polytheistic, these are my gods. I am obsessed with them. People call it sad girl music. I can't help but relate. Oh, yeah, cults too. Yeah, probably. Yeah. I'm perpetually kind of sad. Not in like, okay, kind of like in a little bit of a depressed kind of way. But this music is cathartic for me, okay? A lot of people that listen to, like, don't want to listen to sad music when they're sad. And I get that. Okay, I get it, but I don't understand because I do. Okay, because crying for me is cathartic. It makes me feel kind of good after. That's it. That's kind of delusional to say out loud, but yeah, it kind of does. Y'all never listen to Chance by Angel Olsen while dry heaving on the floor. Anyway, <laughs> um, I listened to this album recently, even though Puberty Two is my, sorry, even though Puberty 2 is my favorite Mitski album, LP, whatever, this one is, a, this one is second, okay, Be the Cowboy, I did like Be the Cowboy, don't, don't get me wrong, it wasn't my favorite, but I did like it, but this one, this one came at a perfect time in my life, and I have tried to shoot this video two other times now, each time it's like, oh, I'm gonna have a little wine. Oh, da, 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 da. A little wine, and I'm gonna get on a camera, and I'm gonna do this. And each time I fucking cry. And you know, even though I said crying is cathartic, I can't be, I can't be crying on Bezos' internet. I can't be, I can't perpetually cry on the internet. Okay, even though, because I find it cringy, and even though cringe isn't real, you know, it's a feeling. I'm not gonna look back on this and be like, go get your fucking shit together. You know what I mean? I don't want to do that. So. We're going to do this sober. And hopefully, this time, I won't cry. Because I did my makeup. And so now, I have a really big mouth. <laughs> like a Kathy Bear was a person. Um, but now, hopefully, I won't cry. So, 
whatever. So I'm gonna tell you what this piercing is because I want it. I'll find it. Don't worry. Fuck it. I'm not gonna make y'all do the work for me. I'll find out what it is and probably get done. But so we're just gonna go through all these songs and talk about them. Go through some of the lyrics. If you haven't heard the album yet, I highly, highly, highly suggest you listen to the album before watching this. I will, I will not be putting any snippets or anything of the songs in this in this video just because of copyright. Because YouTube sucks ass, and I can't put music in this. I don't know how I don't know how some of those channels do it, where like the turning table, like the guy and his like dad, you, you know, the guy is like kind of hot dad, turning table, yeah. Like, I don't know how they do it, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to risk it. Okay. I'm not going to risk it. So we're going to go through some of these songs and I'm going to tell you guys my favorite. And then I want y'all's opinion too, because I sincerely love talking about music with other people. It's not super revolutionary that I love music. I mean, everybody fucking likes music, but I just like talking about music with people because I really, really like music. So with that being said, let's go through some of these songs and I'll talk about them a little bit. Okay. So the album is called The Land is Inhospitable and So Are We. Okay. I have listened to this album probably four, four or five times now. Going, This will be my fifth time listening to the whole album in full. I was going to sit here and like try to play a little bit of music, but like copyright exists, unfortunately. And so there's not really much I can do about that. But I will go through some of the lyrics of my favorite song. So we're going to start off with Bug Like an Angel. So Bug Like an Angel is an incredibly strong piece. And it's so beautifully done. It's so beautiful. And the music video for this is beautiful. The the choir, the chorus, everything is just beautiful. The vocal harmony is beautiful. It's literally just a stunning piece. There are some lyrics here. I have the lyrics pulled up here so I can make sure that I have them correct. But right in the beginning, it says, as I got older, I learned, I learned I'm a drinker. Sometimes a drink like feels like family. Yeah, <laughs> like, I, yeah, yep. And that is something that, like, as I got older, I'm, I'm realizing I'm not an alcoholic by any means, so please don't assume that I am. But there have been times in my life where I have turned to substances for comfort, alcohol being one of them, food also being one of them, honestly. And I don't want to relate this back to my BED, but I know there's going to be a song in here that is 100% going to be related to my BED. But this song made me, it kind of just like broke me down. And a lot of Misky songs do that. But that line specifically made me feel hurt in a weird way. Especially if you grew up, I'm not, you know, there are people in my life that have grown up in pretty rocky childhoods and stuff like that and have turned to substances in order to feel comfort and like as I'm getting older I've become a lot less judgmental of people that unfortunately do struggle with substance abuse and as I've gotten older and I've experienced a lot of heartache and like just being broken myself in a lot of instances and turn to things in order to seek comfort in them, I become incredibly less judgmental of, of people turning to substances for comfort, like sincerely. And I think we need to all show a lot more compassion to people that struggle with it. I know that there are people that really choose it over their families and their children and their livelihood. And I understand that. I understand being frustrated with, with that choice being made. Um, but at the end of the day, like, I just think about how much people, how much human suffering exists, whether externally or internally, and how oftentimes there's never like decent outlets that are even affordable. Like therapy is fucking expensive. There are just not outlets for people to feel comfort in besides going to the liquor store or going, you know, somewhere to do something. And it's just, it's heartbreaking. And it just made me realize as I got older, um, that I too seek out comfort in things when I should actually be like talking to somebody about them. And food was really, really mine, to be honest with you guys. 
food was my comfort for a really long time. And it's still, as I'm going through like transitions in my own life currently, I still feel sometimes like the pressure or the desire to eat in order to feel better. But then you kind of like, at least in my experience, it's an everyday battle. Like it's an everyday battle. I feel as though like, you know, who is that helping? Who Like what problem is that going to solve? Or is it going to temporarily mask the feelings that I'm feeling right now? And I have that problem with other things too, like escapism and stuff like that. Escapism is something that I just have a problem with. <laughs> like, oh, I'm feeling sad. Let's go somewhere. Let's escape this problem. Let's run away from it. Which as I've gotten older, I'm realizing that that doesn't help anything. It doesn't help anything at all. So this song for me made me feel heard, but it also made me feel quite hollow. Um, this song is definitely top of as far as my favorites go. It's up there. There are other songs on this album that I really resonate with more. And that doesn't mean that if I don't resonate with a song that I don't like it. But for me, it's really easy for me to really like a song if I can relate to it, you know what I mean? Focus. Let's talk about Heaven because this song, ah, oh, fuck, this song. This is the part where I started crying when I was a little drunk, so I'm not trying to. This song really means a lot to me. Like it really, my face is getting warm. This song really means a lot to me, like really means a lot to me. And like the composition of the song reminds me of like this, just like, it's like floating romanticism. It's just so beautiful, beautifully composed. It's like, do, 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 do. like the way like you escape with this song especially if you're in love um, and or if you're falling out of it. Um, it makes you really, really just like feel like it's so hard to describe. You know, sometimes it's hard to like articulate feels like feelings um, because sometimes there are just things that you have to feel in order to understand. And with heaven, I definitely get that. Um, for me, this song really means a lot about cherishing people and finding heaven within relationships, finding heaven within somebody else, and rather than seeking heaven, you know, in a religious sense. You know what I mean? I'm not religious whatsoever. I think I've made that pretty clear on my channel. Um, but the concept of finding something like heavenly within the soul of another person or within the embodiment of another human being is something that I do believe in. Um, do I believe in soulmates? Not necessarily. I don't think that there's someone out there that can fulfill every need that you have. Um, I do. I genuinely feel that way. But I do think soulmates for me is putting in time and effort with somebody and learning to grow with them as an individual, learning to learning to be unwilling to learn how to learn with another person. And that doesn't mean that you have to sacrifice any part of yourself, like your self-worth, um, but it, it does mean that there is this collective unit, if you, I'm gonna only speak for monogamous relationships, but there is like a collective unit and you work to make that better. And what that means is not sacrificing your sense of self, but compromising on things that you thought were really non-negotiable things. Um, for me, finding heaven within another person means really cherishing their existence even if it's imperfect. So I Don't Like My Mind is one of the songs on this album, if not the song on this album that I love so much, but it's, it's 
listen to it is an act of catharticism. <laughs> like, it's really an act for me to, like, listen to the song because it is very difficult for me not to compose myself with it. This is, sometimes music has that effect on me. Mer like, sometimes music just has that effect on me. And I think other people that are highly emotional people can relate to that. Um, and so this song was the one that I listened to and I was like, this is my BED. This is my BED. My, I don't like, oh gosh, this is, okay. I'm going to read some of the lyrics and we're going to talk about it. So let's get into it. It says, I don't like my mind. I don't like being left alone in a room with all its opinions about the things that I've done. So yeah, I blast my music loud and I work myself to the bone and on an inconvenient Christmas, I eat a cake, a whole cake, all for me. Okay. This song reminds me of myself, obviously, um, because I'm somebody that suffers with pretty severe anxiety. And I've talked about it on my channel before. And there are times where I, especially recently, I don't like my mind. I don't like the thoughts that I have, the regrets that I sit with. You know how people like at, at night, they just sit <laughs> in their bed and regret things. I mean, maybe not, but that's just like me constantly. And I've learned to, you know, write a lot of stuff down and just talk to myself or to get myself through it. Like I've written poetry about it. Let me, not me trying to pull up my poetry, but I just want to show you guys. I've written some poetry. This is all on my Instagram. Not all of it's poetry. Sometimes they're just thoughts and diary entries um, like this one. It says, learning to embrace the pathological vulnerability that comes with the feelings of falling for another's existence while trying to remain self-aware and emotionally mature enough not to become a limerent onlooker. Allow yourself to feel the innocence of vulnerability while not obsessing over it. Another one says, these are just diary entries that I wrote down and then I put them on Instagram because why the fuck not? It says, I'm addicted to the feelings of infatuation and subsequent disillusion. I've learned nothing of this habit, but let me feel... I am not built to exist without longing, and if I wasn't desired, I would not know how to be a girl, and I would not know how to be alive. Which that one reminded me of a Misty song that I heard, honestly. Um, I, this, this song made me really, really just, like, put into perspective a lot of my own life. Um... Especially when she said an inconvenient Christmas. Oh, fuck. Like, every year for, like, the past few years, like, I have pretty bad seasonal depression as well. Look at look at me. I have pretty, pretty bad seasonal depression as well. And I live in a state that doesn't get a lot of sunlight. And so um, it's not, not that great. So um, every year, like, Christmas comes around, and I do kind of see it as an inconvenience. And that's horrible. But that's just the reality of it, you know? Like, every time that holiday comes around, I don't really look forward to it. It's not because I'm ungrateful or that I don't love my family. I absolutely love my family. But it always comes at a time when I'm mentally doing probably the worst. And it's always just an inconvenience. And when I was struggling a lot with BED, um... I would eat a whole cake easily. You know, you the the feelings of being like having seasonal depression, having anxiety on top of it, going out to your family, driving in the fucking snow half the time to see your family that lives hours and hours away. And you get there and you're just like I'm so overwhelmed. I'm so overwhelmed. That the only thing I can seek solace in is food. I'm your man. I'm your man. I'm, my hair is frizzy. I'm your man. I'm your man. I'm, 
Number one song on the album for me. Number one song on the album for me. Number one song on the album for me. And let me talk about why. Let's go through the lyrics, shall we, babies? Okay. You're an angel. I'm a dog. Okay. First off, I want to say that stars and dogs are a motif in a lot of Mitski's music. I don't know if you've noticed it. I have noticed it. I've noticed it. Stars and dogs. Anyway, let's get into this lyrics. You're an angel, I'm a dog, or you're a dog, and I'm your man. You believe me like a god, I destroy you like I am. Bars. Fucking bars. And going back to, like, the religious motif here. You, you believe me like a god, I destroy you like I am. Um, I don't want to ruffle anybody's feathers about religion whatsoever. Please know that I'm not trying to do that. I've just seen... I've seen a lot of people that turn to God and it kind of destroys their sense of self. I'm not saying that's you or anybody that you know. I'm just saying that I've seen it. And that's all I'll say. Okay. And I'm sorry I'm the one you love. No one will ever love me like you again. So when you leave me, I should die. I deserve it, don't I? Okay, so... My my criticism of the song is not even really that much of a criticism, honestly. Because from what I'm understanding about this song, and y'all can tell me your thoughts in the comments, like I said a million times in this video, I want to talk about it. So, it seems as though Mitski, in this situation, at least in this song, in this context, is discussing how they possibly ruined a relationship themselves. They destroyed a relationship, whether their actions or whatever. I don't, it doesn't get into that. And this response, honestly, or the, you know, I should die, I deserve it, don't I, comes off, and I'm not saying anything about Miss Kitty herself, but if, if someone said that to me and we, like, ended a relationship and they said, I deserve, I deserve to die, don't I, little, little red flags going off right there. I will say that. But... I understand why it may feel that way. I understand why it may feel that way, for sure. I think that lyric is incredibly powerful, for sure. But if I was like, you know, if I dump somebody or whatever, and that's what they said to me, I'd be like, okay, ding dong, red flag. But I understand why it may feel that way. And I actually really enjoyed that part of the song. It says, I can feel it getting near, like flashlights coming down, the way one day you'll figure me out i'll meet you i'll meet judgment by the hounds again dog motif park 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 um people always gave me love others were never to blame at all you believe me like a god i'll betray you like a man you can't tell me that doesn't absolutely eat you cannot tell me that that isn't chew eat consume swallow pass through the colon you can't tell me that at all that and that is something that i think is really important to the um people always give me love others were never to blame at all that self-actualization that self-reflection that maybe other people weren't the problem it was me all along it was me all along i destroyed this relationship because of something that I was going through that I was pressing down and then blamed others for. And I was pointing the finger at everybody else, but I didn't point the finger at myself. That's powerful as fuck. Realizing that after you go, like, realizing that when it's already too late must be incredibly heartbreaking. Realizing that when it's already too fucking late, when there's no save in it, when there's no save in it, that must be incredibly heartbreaking. Like, okay, now that I'm out of this and I'm realizing that, oh, ending this relationship didn't solve any of my problems. You know what I mean? That's, that's a fucking powerful emotion that really can only be felt if it's felt. You know what I mean? Can only be felt in your bones kind of emotion. You know what I mean? And you believe me like a god, I'll betray you like a man. Weird way to end a song, honestly. But it seems as though in this song particularly, Mitski 
was the something happened obviously that caused the inevitable downfall of that of their relationship and they are realizing in retrospect that i sabotaged myself for no gain or reward there is no comfort in self-sabotage there is no home here in destroying what i've known burning bridges isn't always productive baby girl burning bridges isn't always the way out and i feel like a lot of people including myself to a fault sometimes think that burning bridges is really the only way to become free from something or escape something that i have to sabotage this in order for me to get over it That I have to sabotage it. That I have to destroy it in, in order to overcome it. And then when you and then when that happens and you destroy it, and you look back and said, I was actually the problem here. And I was looking for an, a way out. And it's already too late, and that bridge has been burned, and there's no chance of reconciliation because that person that was hurt is, is now moved on. You sit with that. You sit with that feeling. I can't really speak to this on a level in which I can relate to it, but I can speak to this on a level of seeing people that I love ruin their lives and then realize that there was nothing to gain in order to do that. You know what I mean? And to, to an extent, I have this fault with sabotaging something in order to break free from it, but that's more so like in my jobs. Um, but um, yeah, that song, easily number one on the album for me. Love that song. Powerful shit. Overall, this album for me is one of my favorite Misty albums. Obviously, Puberty 2 is still my number one. That one has my heart. But this is incredible. I love it. If I don't want to give it like a rating or whatever, but if I were, if somebody wants to say, okay, out of 10, what would you give this? I'd give this like a eight and a half. I'd give it an eight and a half. Cause there were some songs in here that I, that weren't my favorite and I didn't really talk about them very much, but the amount of songs that I did really like on this album keeps me going back to this. I will, I will probably be listening to this album again tonight with another glass of wine and maybe cry a little. Tell me what your thoughts are. All right. See ya. Bye.